Hi, my name is Amanda Forkner. I'm a coach here in Rochester School District. And today we're going to take a look at the NWEA class report. We just finished our winter benchmarks, and so what I did was I pulled one of our classes' uh, benchmark report. And I just want to kind of get an idea of how is this class doing, how do they compare to the rest of the districts in our district, and compare to the national norms. So when I first pull it up and I'm looking at my mathematics, um, page, you'll see that the total number of students from my class that finished is 15. And I'm, all right, that's three quarters of my class is done, but that's okay. And I find out that their mean writ is 159.1, which I'm like, okay, well, is that any good or is that not so good? And I want to look at the norm for my grade level. And the norm is 172.4. So I'm looking at about, what, a 13 point gap from where they should be as to where they are. That's okay, that's going to give me some information, but this standard deviation is going to give me a whole lot as far as what do I do now. And that tells me because it's double digits that there's a high need for differentiation in this class. There are some kids that are really getting it and there are some kids that really aren't. And then when I go down to the bottom and see my breakdown, which is down here, I find out that none of my kids are reading, reaching it at 80 percentile or above. But I do have three that are above average and one that is average. So of my 15, I have four of them, or basically one-fourth, that are either meeting or exceeding expectations. Unfortunately, I have seven, or almost half, that are well, well below where they need to be, which is why you're seeing that big standard deviation. So the next question comes, okay, well, I need a little more detail so I can figure out who I need to help and how I can help them. So we're going to look at the next page, which is also taking that math data and then breaks it down a little bit further. You'll notice that you'll have your overall math cur um, curriculum, the overall performance based on their core mathematics. And the nice thing is there's this color chart underneath that can tell me how much of my class, which is this red, that are the low lows and how much is that green, which is that above average. So there's this nice little section right here that are the people that are meeting those needs, or meeting the expectations, or above the expectations. But again, three quarters of my class are below expectations. And if I forget, there's that norm again as to where I want to be, and here's where my kids are basically performing. So I go down, and it then breaks down our different math tests into the different sections or subsets. Operations and algebraic thinking, number and operations, measurement and data, and geometry. And you'll see if I'm looking at these just kind of overall glancing, obviously numbers and operation or algebraic thinking is exactly where I've been teaching because that's where I'm seeing the most blue, that's where I'm seeing the least red. So nine times out of ten that's going to be what you've been teaching because that's what the kids are going to perform best on. Do you think I've probably taught measurement and data or numbers and operations? Maybe some, but not as much as I have with these other two subjects or sub-subjects, because otherwise I hopefully my kids would be performing better. But seeing as I see some blue here and I see blue here, I'm going to guess that these are probably the two areas that I have been teaching in the classroom. Now depending, uh, maybe I've done a little bit of geometry in there, or maybe they just have a lot of questions from the year before that are that geometric shapes or flats and solids, things like that, that we've looked at before. But if I look at this, I can then break down, even in each subject area or the subsubjects, how far the standard deviations are, which is over here in this column on the far right. So if my overall is 16.4 standard deviation, you'll see that most of my kids it's 15.2. That's the lowest standard deviation to show that, the, that as far as overall in my class, most of my kids are in the same general area for this. Not most of the kids are doing great, but most of them are in the same general area. So, yeah, absolutely. Here's 11 out of my 15 that are below or well below average. But then, if I want to look at the one that's the highest, the 20.7, that tells me that as far as algebraic and algebraic thinking and operations, that's where I need to do my differentiation because that number is the largest differentiation, largest standard deviation to give me that differentiation between the highest performing kids, which are these four and one, 
and 4. So you're looking at 9 of them that are at expectations or above, and then there are 6 that just are so far below. So those 6 would be the 6 kids I would work on with some sort of skills to help build those foundational skills for operations and algebraic thinking. And you could continue to look at this more and more and dig in deeper, but the nice thing is the next page then tells me each of my students' names, what their standard writ was, what their standard error was, percentage-wise, like, all right, well, how did they perform, how long they took to take this test. Now, let, looking at these numbers, I see a kid who spent 33 minutes on it, and then I see a kid who spent 13. It's not really a surprise that this kid didn't score very well. Now, it surprises me, though, that this kid didn't do as well. Average, low, low, low. However, this kid is trying. They're not just going in and click, click, clicking like this one probably is. Now, maybe they both are low and they both would perform the same on a test in the classroom, but in this case, the skills that I've been teaching, which again, I'm thinking I probably have been teaching operations and algebraic thinking, they're scoring average on. So that gives me hope that this kid, with continued support, will be able to learn the skills that I have in store for them and will take the time to do well. Now there's a lot more you could look at this for and actually fin figure out what are areas I need to work on, what are areas that are good, but I just want to give you a touch onto the reading. Reading's basically set up the same general way with this time I had 18 of my kids take the test, 159 of them, or 159.7 was their mean writ, and the norm is 170. So here we're only missing about 11% from where our goal is. But look at our standard deviation. That is much closer to that 10. Ideally it would be below 10, but we all know the reality is some kids are going to be able to read a lot faster than others. Exposure, home life, etc., etc. So as I look at my overall reading, I notice that 12 of these kids out of the 18, so you're looking again at what, two-thirds, that are below or well below the expectation, and you've got six of them, or one-third, that is either average or high average. No one's really, really like blowing it out of the park, but that's okay still early in the year. And again, your standard deviation is listed on the end. And then finally, the last page takes that same information that we had for math, but now breaks down your reading. So again, your reading overall is listed here with that nice colorful chart underneath. And it shows me that of these areas, the area of most need is these foundational skills because that's where my biggest gaps are, where my largest area of kids who are at low, low, low. So there's 11 of them. But there's no low average, so either there's 11 of them, which don't get it, and then there's the seven that do. And that just happens to be that lowest standard deviation too, because you see they either know it or they don't, but there's that high group that's in that low section. But most of your other standard deviations are around 14 and 15 because about half your class get it and about half your class doesn't. But you also have these low average or below the beginning below average. So, but this information can be used to help us make those differentiation groups, help us figure out what subjects to be working on and perhaps even um, figure out what are the areas that I need to better improve my instructional practices? Thanks for joining us today. Hopefully this was helpful, um, and we'll see you soon.